I go, I don't think Valentine is in that group. <laughs> it was Lee Lee Lee, by the way. What's that? Lee Lee Lee. Lee P, yeah. L E A P Y. Yes. Lee P Lee. Little arrows, time will tell. Um, Just had to pull a Gary and look it up. There, thank you. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> I, I didn't show those with the prayer during the service. I figured, <laughs> I, I, I figured that, you know, if, if you were going to hang around for the, for the, the, the class, you would, you would, uh, you would get these. Um, all you have to do is just, for hanging around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All you have to do is just Google Valentine's memes, and you can find all sorts of them. <laughs> but these two, these two showed up in my Facebook feed um, anyway. So there we go. Um, you all know where we've been. We've talked about saints, Jewish antecedents, Christian adaptations, additions. Constantine, foot bones in a reliquary, the Reformation and the American church experience um, up to uh, and including 1979 and um, subsequent to that. And, um, you know, the question that sort of kept us going um, is what's being remembered and how and why. And um, I remind us of that question. Um, because as we move into um, the, uh, the bits of today um, that we'll be talking about, that becomes um, an interesting, a, 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 a kind of interesting set of considerations. But before we do that, many of you will recall that um, I've been plugging this um, the thing called Lent Madness. And, um, and they send out on Monday of every week, something called Monday Madness that sort of sets up the week. And here is what came out last Monday. Question here um, from MB Divine that was seconded by Kit Carlson. How does the Episcopal Church determine sainthood? Oh yeah, so um, good question. We get that a lot. A couple things, uh, first of all, um, we follow, in some sense, the New Testament where um, holy ones, hagios, are saints. So in the New Testament, saints are just other Christians. So in some sense, everyone is made a saint when they are baptized. But that's sort of the question you're asking and not really. We also remember some saints in our uh, calendar. On certain days, we remember particular saints uh, for one reason or another. And that is decided at the Episcopal Church's general convention which is normally held every three years. Lay people go and vote, uh, deacons and priests go and vote, and bishops go and vote. And um, proposals to add people into our calendar are made at general convention. And if general convention says, yes, we should remember um, uh, St. Dunstan or uh, St. Mark or whoever it is, then they get added to the calendar. And it's about as exciting as watching paint dry to watch church legislation. But if you like watching paint dry, you might enjoy this too. Yeah, well, uh, so it's about as exciting as, a, as your average episode of Monday Madness. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> right. And um, you can, if you, um, uh, we'll put a link in this episode, but if you go and Google Lesser Feasts and Fasts 2018, you can get the current a crop of Episcopal saints. You're looking to see if you have one there and you don't. I don't. Anyway, no. you can get the current crop of Episcopal saints and their little biographies and so forth. Think of it as a... Oh, oh well. On, <laughs> there you go. So, you know, I could have showed that five weeks ago and then we'd, we'd be done. <laughs> um, but no. Uh, I, I, you know, they, they got it right for the most part. So we talked about um, 
you know, what the Episcopal Church has done since um, we became the Episcopal Church in 1789. Um, and we started, of course, with those core commemorations. Um, Scott Gunn, who was the, the fellow on the left, said, you know, well, if the Episcopal Church decides that it wants to honor St. Mark, well, that one was done a long, long time ago. Um, you know, that was, was included in those core commemorations way back in 1789. But since then, um, folks have been added. And uh, clearly, we've, we've talked about that. Um, and, you know, there's been ambiguity about who's included and who is not. And then we hit prayer book revision. And um, so 1979 was that day or that year when General Convention, in all of its deliberations, adopted uh, the prayer book that we have in our pews, the 1979 prayer book, and adopted um, Lesser Feasts and Fasts. Uh, which was known as the 1980 one, but that's the, the uh, one that is there in the front of those older, older prayer books. As um, time has gone on, mentioned this last week, there have been additions, as um, the, uh, the Monday Madness folks pointed out, there have been additions to that list that was done in 1980. We talked about that a little bit. And what happens, although they didn't say this, is that um, if, if somebody is proposed to be included in the calendar, general convention will say, yes, we will do these provisionally. Um, there will be a three year trial period. And then if it goes over well, then at the next general convention, we'll bop them in, we'll put them in in entirety. So it, it, it's not an immediate process. Each one of these sort of goes through um, an iteration of, of waiting and, and checking to see how well uh, this worked. Kind so, of a priest in charge for, for saints, huh? Yeah, yeah something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. Uh, so at, at the end of um, 2003, I think I mentioned this uh, last year, um, there was, or last week, uh, speaking of time, um, you know, they wanted to, to authorize a revision of lesser feasts and fasts. Um, and, and the resolution was to reflect our increasing awareness of the importance of the ministry of all the people of God and the cultural diversity um, of the Episcopal Church, of the wider Anglican communion, of our ecumenical partners, and of our lively experience of sainthood in local communities. That was a resolution that was passed at General Convention in 2003. <laughs> And um, so what they really wanted to do is that the calendar would be a representative document. And this is what it goes back to that question that we've been off, um, operating on, what is being remembered? Um, the calendar is a representative document, teaches history in a very different way um, than, than it had been taught in the past. Uh, and it's shifting, representative of a shift in the way that we think about history. Um, I think most of us, um, when we were growing up and taking history in school, you know, it was the big important dates and the big important people. That was history. Um, you know, nobody cared much about how clothing mirrored social trends um, or something like that. You know, that's social history and that's important now. Um, but we learned history of ideas, how one idea uh, spawned another one. And so we'd think about what Aristotle learned from Plato and how all of those ideas wandered down. We'd learn when, who fought who and who won. Um, we'd learn who became king or president um, and all of those kinds of things. But it was all the important stuff. And so history including church history, um, was all about the big folk and not so much about some of the, uh, a, a more representative body. So um, that 1950s model of history uh, driven by the great um, was replaced by a more socially aware form, um, as, as I mentioned last week. And so that ended up, um, resulting in this, in this uh, book, this collection called Holy Women, Holy Men. Um, and 
the the what's the word I'm looking for? The encouragement that that um, general convention gave to uh, the Standing Liturgical Commission on Liturgy and Music um, was to reflect on the significance um, of that that sort of lively experience of sainthood in local communities and how that might encourage the living out of baptism. So what are we remembering? We're remembering a great breadth of witness uh, to Christ and the church, that great breadth, but we're doing it, why? To encourage the living out of our baptism. Um, so just thinking about the greats might not do that in the same way as thinking about it in terms of sort of more regular people. And so the, the, the Standing Commission um, on Liturgy and Music worked on that and came up with this book, Holy Women, Holy Men. And um, I want to um, show you uh, and, and sort of read through, I know it's kind of tedious, but um, some of the preface, because I think it's really instructive. So this was written, the preface was written by our last presiding bishop, uh, Catherine Jefferts Shorey, under whose, um, when, she, when she was providing bishop, this, this document was, was produced in 2010. Over the years, Lesser Feasts and Fasts has helped the church grow in appreciation of this communion, Lesser Feasts and Fasts. With each successive general convention, more names have been added to the calendar. At the same time, questions have been raised regarding some of the biographies, choices of scripture and composition of the collects. And you know, some people got thrown out like Valentine, all right? But that happened before, <laughs> before 1979. Um, during my term as presiding bishop, I therefore asked Standing Commission to undertake a review and revision and to consider anew each entry in the existing calendar of saints alongside any proposed new commemorations. To that end, a committee of the commission was established. Holy women, holy men celebrating the saints is the fruit of the committee's careful and painstaking work. That book seeks to expand the worshiping community's awareness of the communion of saints and to give increased expression to the many and diverse ways in which Christ, through the agency of the Holy Spirit, has been present in the lives of men and women across the ages, just as Christ continues to be present in our own day. Faced with circumstances most often very different from our own, these courageous souls bore witness to Christ's death-defying love in service, in holiness of life, and in challenge to existing practices and perspectives within both the church and the society. These are not simply examples of faithfulness to inspire us. They are active in their love and prayer, that vast communion of saints um, with, you know, that surrounds us. They are companions in the spirit, able to support and encourage us as we seek to be faithful in our own day. So that's a very different um, way of thinking about saints than looking at the the authors of the evangel uh, of the gospels, for example, or of, of uh, those uh, second, third century martyrs, or even somebody like Thomas Aquinas. Uh, we're looking at somebody who, who didn't make it to that kind of pinnacle. And so they went through and, and added a whole lot of folks um, to a proposal. And that's what holy women, holy men was, was. It was proposed to general convention and it made it to general convention, but it didn't make it out of general convention as um, um, affirmed, as established um, in the same way that lesser feasts and fasts had done. In fact, um, it was taken yet uh, another step further so when holy women, holy men showed up at convention in, um, in 2009, um, there was a, a movement to say, we want to continue thinking about this. And um, what they realized in talking about um, holy women, holy men 
was that there was a wide range of what are called sanctoral theologies, you know, the, the theology, the belief of what makes somebody a saint. There was a wide range of those um, in, in, in the church. And Deb, I think you brought this up way back at the beginning, uh, whether it was in this class or in another conversation about how the calendar seemed to lean towards introverts or it seemed to lean towards extroverts. That, um, you know, is there a sanctoral theology that um, prioritizes uh, individual prayer or is there a sanctoral theology that prioritizes social action? And different folks in the church uh, might see these things a little differently. And, and so because there were these differences in looking at holy women and holy men and a lot of the other uh, proposals that were brought forth to, uh, for inclusion in the final uh, version, um, it, it, there were disagreements, obviously, about who does and who doesn't belong because there were disagreements in the sanctoral theologies. Um, on the on the other hand, you know, people saw, well, this is great because we're increasing what our calendar looks like. It's just we can't agree <laughs> on who should be in it. This sounds very Anglican, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and and so um, the uh, there's a new they, the convention said, well, let's keep going, and um, so they worked on this new volume, um, a great cloud of witnesses. And in um, one of the pieces about this, it says, in order to maintain a comprehensive stance toward differing theologies of sainthood and to recognize the desire to remember people important to the church without passing judgment on their sanctoral status or requiring them to fit within a particular mode of saintliness, we have created this new resource entitled A Great Cloud of Witnesses. This resource recognizes individuals who have made significant contributions to our understanding of our calling as the body of Christ within the complexities of the 21st century world without making a statement one way or another on their sanctity. It serves, I like this, it serves as a family history, identifying those people inside and outside the Episcopal Anglican tradition who help us proclaim the gospel in word, deed, and truth. So now we're talking about who are we remembering and why we're talking about a family history. Very, very different way of thinking about sainthood than um, what was done in the 50s. So here is, um, and again, uh, I've, I've highlighted just a few things. Um, in this. So this is from the preface of Great Cloud of Witnesses. Um, it's a further step of the development of liturgical commemorations within the life of the church. First, it presents a wide array of possible commemorations for individuals and congregations to observe. Recognize that there are many perspectives on the identity and place of exemplary Christians in the life of the church. This volume proposes that the metaphor of a family history is a fitting way to describe who's included. Second, the calendar in a great cloud of witnesses does not purport to be a definitive collection of saints, but rather an additional calendar of optional commemorations that represent the breadth of the human or of the Christian family story. Um, the range of sanctoral theologies remain resulting disagreement. So that's why they have done that. And then in order to maintain a comprehensive stance towards all those differing theologies um, without passing judgment, that's why they created this book. It serves as a family history. So that was what showed up at 2015. So in 2006, um, the church adopted lesser feasts and fasts and said, we've got to keep going. And so in 2009, um, they showed up with, uh, um, or no, yeah, yeah, 2009, they showed, uh, showed up with uh, holy women, holy men. 2012, they said, no, 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 that's not quite right. In 2015, they showed up with great cloud of witnesses. 
we're still working with Lesser Feasts and Fasts of 2006 as official. Okay. So now we got these two books. We got Holy Women, Holy Men. We got Great Cloud of Witnesses in which there is some overlap. And so what happened next? We show up at General Convention 2018. And now we get to watch paint dry. <laughs> so here is the resolution. Um, the title is to authorize continued use of lesser feasts and fasts. Resolved, 79th General Convention authorized this continued use, be it further resolved, commend the continued availability of great cloud of witnesses for the next three years, and that new commemorations be included and that the Standing Liturgical Commission provide the 80th General Convention with a clear and unambiguous plan for a singular calendar. <laughs> okay, so in, in General Convention in 2018, the, the proposal was, let's fix this folks and be consistent. We got too many calendars floating around out there. Let's be consistent. Well, um, the paint drying um, uh, commenced. And you can go online and you can read all of the discussion, but here's what happened to that resolution. Um, the right Reverend Neil Alexander was the chair of the House of Bishops Committee on Prayer Book Stuff. They just struck that whole first, uh, that whole first one resolution, ended up saying the House of Deputies concurring, we authorize the continued use of lesser feasts and fasts and that we commend the continued availability of great cloud of witnesses and that new con commemorations be included and that we have we want the 80th general convention to provide a clear and unambiguous calendar <laughs> and that motion was adopted and carried and that's where we are now we still have the 2006 lesser feasts and fasts and we have great cloud of witnesses <laughs> um, side by side. And we aren't having a general convention in 2021 because of COVID. So this um, problem will probably not be resolved, um, if at all, until next year. Um, so <coughs> the, la the, the latest edition, last edition of Lester Feasts and Fasts, way back in 2006, was intended to reflect a balance of women and men, orders of ministry, races and ethnicities, and historical time periods. It was designed so it could stand alone, and that's the 2018 version um, that, that includes a lot of these folks. Um, but it can be used in conjunction with Great Cloud of Witnesses. Um, and the use of these two books recognizes that diversity of understandings about how what, how it, what it means for somebody to be considered a saint. So this is just really typical Anglicanism, right? Um, if you go back to the very first prayer book, the very first, I'm talking about the, the, the 16th century, um, you've got included in there things that look very Catholic and things that look very Protestant. They're both in the same book. Um, the classic thing, you know, that Queen Elizabeth apparently said is, I don't care what you believe, just use this book. So everybody's <laughs> using the same book. You know, we're going to allow for that kind of, of breadth um, without being too directive. And that has been um, one of the glories of the, uh, the Anglican communion ever since ever. Um, in, in this slide here, right in the middle on the lower <laughs> chunk is uh, a little three-letter word that um, Patricia Lyons, who was the, um, the keynote speaker at the, the last in-person uh, diocesan convention we had, said is the most Anglican word there is. <laughs> and. It's this <laughs> and this. It's this and this. Yes. It's this <laughs> and this. That Anglican theology is this and. And so we've got this, this thing that is the 2018 prayer book or the Lester Feast and Fast, which reflects a lot of the stuff um, that we've been talking about since 2006. 
but it's a provisional book. It's, this is still a provisional, provisional book. It isn't finalized. And, and then we've got next to it, um, the great cloud of witnesses. So I go back to, to the, the questions that we've been working on all the time is what is being remembered and how are we remembering it and why are we remembering it? Well, certainly for centuries, we were remembering those big heroes and heroines of the faith for all of that amazing stuff that they did. And, and we're remembering them by giving them days in the prayer book. Um, and, and the big ones with big days in the prayer book, and then everybody else with these kind of optional ones. And why are we doing it? It's mostly to teach us um, about how the faith has, was lived out. Then we saw more recently that there was a little bit of, of, a, of a morphing, that we started to include other folks to remind us of the breadth of the church and to encourage us to live out our baptismal vows. And then in this last piece, there's this sense that we're, this is our big family. And just as we would look back in, in, a, in a family tree, we're gonna find people in that family who were really marvelous examples of being, you know, a brower. And we're gonna find some folks who are maybe not such marvelous, but, but they're all part of our family. And we're really going to remember, you know, Uncle Harold, because Uncle Harold was really probably the brush brower that, that we could remember or something like that. But they're all part of our family. And that the Christian family is diverse. So there, there is, you know, this difference, um, this, this clear difference as we've worked on this over the last um, 2000 years, over the last six weeks, about how we're remembering, who's, who we are remembering, and why we're remembering them. Um, and, and so then we end up with things like Lent Madness, you know, in terms of learning, but also playing with the family. You know, this is, this is a family game now. And, and I think, I think it's, it's a wonderful one. So I am going to, um, I don't think I've got, oh, I've got this slide. I, yeah, that's the end of this slide. I'm going to back out of this slideshow. I have, um, you, know, I, I, you know, so that we can all sort of see each other. I don't know if anybody downloaded um, that, uh, what I made up as this spreadsheet of the increase of saints, but I can show that to folks who did not download it. And we can see kind of graphically how a lot of this happened um, and made some conversation there. But right now I'm going to um, see if I can stop this share. There. And, and what questions, see if there are questions that folks have. Thoughts, ideas. I have a comment. Uh, yeah. The, the, I, I don't own a copy of Cloud of Witness and I probably should. You can so, get all uh, of these, they're, they're all, all of these are online. Right, but, mm -hmm. but it was for me quite liberating, especially in, in a sort of ecumenical setting as a chaplain at St. Anne's, to be able to say that among the saints that we honor uh, is someone like Martin Luther King, um, and he is not an Anglican. Um, and that was a just, just made, just opened the world as far as, you know, the people who were asking, um, who weren't Anglican, mm -hmm. um, just opened the world and said, oh, okay, all right, you, you know, you're making it somewhere. And I thought, you know, I was very appreciative of the fact that we were no longer as narrow as we had been uh, when I was ordained. Uh -huh. So is he in the cloud of witnesses or the lesser feast? And it's in holy men and holy women. Here, let me, let me, I'm going to, I'm going to share this screen so that we can kind of see um, how, how some of this works. Um, so I'm assuming that you can see my, my chart. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I, can you magnify it? <laughs> 
I can see that there is a chart, and even with my brand new beautiful glass, ah, now I can see. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I, so um, you can see up at the top, I've got uh, all of these, the, the, the dates of the prayer book, 28, 60, or the dates of Lester Feast and Fast, etc. 73, you mentioned Martin Luther Martin. King. He showed up in 1988. Yeah. Um, but when you get over here to the greater cloud of witnesses, um, well, actually, you can see that there was a lot that happened in this, in, in here, Holy Men and Holy Women, which is this pink one, mm -hmm. this calendar. You can see where a lot of folks got added. And then they carried over into the great cloud of witnesses. So right now, according to the last um, convention, we're operating under Lesser Feast and Fast 2018, which has some of these folks, as well as Great Cloud of Witnesses is sort of sitting over here um, on, on, the, on, on the side, on the side table. But some of the pink ones have dropped off in 2018. Mm -hmm. Say that? Some yeah, of some, the, some of the pink ones have dropped off. Some of them. Yeah. Um, because they, uh, there are others, if you look up here, in, in, uh, on March 21st, uh, uh, Thomas Cranmer um, was, you know, considered holy women, holy men. He, he was moved, so that one stayed. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of, uh, <laughs> Anna, here, February 28th and February 26th, these two <laughs> were proposed in the holy men or holy women, holy men, made it into the Lesser Feasts and Fasts. So not everybody was dropped. Um, but John Roberts up on February 25th got dropped. Well, he didn't make it into Lesser Feasts and, he didn't make it into Lesser Feasts and Fasts, but here Frederick Douglass, cloud of witnesses. Frederick Douglass did make it across. Oh, that is interesting. Frederick but John Henry Newman didn't. Uh-huh. Well, he was Roman Catholic. <laughs> right? I thought that, this was ecumenical. What? We're going to discount them because they were Catholic? Well, that's why he's still in greater great cloud of witnesses. So this is what's fascinating is to see who who came in and who dropped. If you look down at um no no uh, let's see. I don't know who Paul Cuffey is, but you know, um see if I can Innocent of Alaska, you know. We don't know. Some of these folks um, try not to make you dizzy as I, uh, here, Nicholas Ludwig von Zinzendorf um, on May 10th um, didn't make it past, didn't make it, make that cut, you know, so, so there are some who, who just, um, John Elliott, Copernicus and Kepler, oh, yes. <laughs> were proposed, but haven't made it into sort of saintliness. So, you know, it's, it's how do you make these decisions? How do you make these decisions? Um, but you can see if I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit. Um, you can see, come on. Well, you can see how, how, how things sort of have expanded across. Here's a good, here's a good screen. How they've, how they've expanded since 28, right? Mm -hmm. You can see Why what happened in 63, where there was a huge crowd that just got added in 63, and then again in 80, and then again in 2008, and then again with holy women, holy men. So it, it, it's this great sort of, um, you know, greater than symbol, <laughs> rather than the less than symbol. Um, it hasn't come down, it's increased. Um, and again, if you want to go in and download that, you can play with it as you will. Uh, if, if, if I had gotten, well, I would have needed another four weeks to go in and, and to, to hyperlink all of those people to Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was, you know, it was, it was very, very interesting. One of the things, uh, this is just my own personal bit, is that um, on uh, August 29th, you look down, well, it's right now in the middle for a while, John Bunyan was there on August 29th. Yeah, you know, he's Pilgrim's there, Progress, yeah. right? Uh -huh. He didn't make it into Great Cloud of Witnesses or into Lesser Feast <laughs> Past. 
What did make it in was the beheading of John the Baptist, hmm. which is long been a feast in the Roman Catholic Church. And the reason that I know this is because that's my birthday. <laughs> so, so, you know, I'm glad to know that at least in the current calendar, my birthday has, uh, has, has a commemoration, even if it is the beheading of John the Baptist. Who is it for today? Today. Oh, Cyrus and the Methodist. Yes, uh, Cyril, Cyril and Methodius. Oh, okay. Why Methodius. Was job? Cyril and Methodius for a long, long time. Ever mm -hmm. since um, the 79 prayer book. Oh, Valentine was never in there. Okay. No, no, no. <clears throat> he actually got dropped from the Roman calendar a long time ago, although I think they may have added him back in. What did he do um, wrong? <laughs> what's that? What did he do what wrong? Did he do wrong? Event, boy? <laughs> yeah, so um, Cyril and Methodius were, um, were missionaries to the Slavic countries in the 8th right. or ninth century. Um, and if you, if you think about do you know what the alphabet is? The, the, the Russian alphabet is called? The Cyrillic. Yeah, I mean. The Cyrillic alphabet for St. Cyril, who developed that alphabet. Um, so yeah, they're, 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 they're kind of um, significant. But you know, it's interesting to see that Absalom Jones, who was Friday, um, made it in way, way back in the 79 prayer book. The, in the, the 80, uh, you know, mm -hmm. so the first African-American priest uh, in, in the Episcopal Church. Um, and founder so, of the Methodist Episcopal Church, one of the founders of it. Dr. Uh, Louis Gates is going to talk about that on Tuesday night and PBS. <laughs> yeah, the growth of the Black Church. Yep, and he was not particularly treated well. No, Mary, he wasn't. You're, you're, you're muted, Mary. Other one that was Oak Eater in 79 and has mm -hmm. been able to hold his place. Yeah, David Pendleton, Oak mm -hmm. Yeah, he's there. I well, have a question. No, is Santa a, Lucia in December or did she get lost? Who? who? Santa, Lucia. Santa Lucia. Oh, no. Um, she was added. She made it in. Oh, I'm in so glad. The eight. She wasn't because there before. Because we Scandinavians really like her. <laughs> yep, yep. No, she made it in in 88. Good. Um, but as Lucy instead of Lucia. Well, it, it, well it's because just, she's, just different well, spelling. She's Italian, but. Look, Dorothy Sayers is there. Yeah, I was yeah. interested in that too. Yep. Dorothy Sayers? Yep. The author? But yes. only in the yes. real yes. professional. Number 17. She, she um, if you look her up, you can find this, but she did more than write Lord Peter Whimsey Mysteries. Oh um, my God. She, she, she wrote some apologetic stuff as well. Um, and so that's why she's in there, not for, not for Bunter. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, oh, and I love Thomas Merton being in there, but he yeah, didn't know yeah. But he didn't, he sort of didn't survive the cut. Neither he nor oh, Carl Blanton um, didn't survive that cut. That's um, too bad. So, yeah, it's just, oh, it's just fascinating to go or through. Carl Barth. Yeah, fascinating to go through and see who was added, who got dropped. Um, Cornelius the Centurion, for example, got dropped. Had been in for a long time and then got dropped. Um, hmm. You know, and I, I don't know why I'm not, I haven't been at general convention to, to ask these questions, but you're welcome to, you know, to download this and, and uh, just to see what, uh, see what you find, um, <laughs> what, what questions arise and uh, ponderables. Um, yeah. Gary, I, so I, is I, the 2018 I, authorized at this point? The it's 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 not it doesn't have the the standing um, here. Let me see if I can. I, well, I'm not going to show you the. I'm going to just go back to the to the slide and see if I can find exactly what that resolution said. Um, yeah. uh, resolve the House of Deputies that 79. General Convention authorized the continued use 
of Lesser Feasts and Fast 2006 resolved that it commend the continued availability of Great Cloud of Witnesses 2015, resolved that the new commemorations in Lesser Feasts and Fasts 2018 be proposed for trial use be included in the calendar for the 2018-21 triennium. So it's in there as proposed, okay? But 2006 is still the official Lesser Feasts and Fasts. Everything else is, is proposed. And um, so one of the um, uh, calendars that I frequently use will show you um, a calendar that's publicized on the forward movement um, page. If you uh, look up liturgical calendars, it will tell you, it will give you three options. The 2006 Lesser Feasts and Fasts, and then Great Holy Women, Holy Men, and then Great Cloud of Witnesses. And depending on which one you want to follow, um, you, you, can, um, you can sort of follow whichever one you want. Um, the calendar that I use when I send out the Saint of the Day is the one that if you go to the Episcopal Church's official website and plug in liturgical calendar, that's the one that they have on their website. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's classic, you know, it depends on who you Google as to which calendar you get. Um, because there's this range of, of uh, sanctoral theologies to use that language. So, other questions? I have uh, to say that my favorite anthem is kind of a children, uh, my favorite saints anthem it's kind of a children's anthem um i sing a song of the feast yep. of the saints, saints of god yeah god. and and the thing that i like about that is that it gives me hope that i'm a saint i mean it, that you can be <laughs> real people can be saints yeah, it's because you meet them at tea right so <laughs> if I go back to my my comment from our very first session is who are the saints of Good Shepherd? Mm -hmm. The answer, the correct answer is all of us. That's right. <laughs> right. There are some that are true, that are more saintly than others. <laughs> that's why you're in the, not in the lesser book. I mean, you know. <laughs> well, you know, I think, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, we've got a bell for him. Um, John Kerner, yeah. for example, would be a saint. Martin Owens would be a saint. Um, Heather Land would be a saint, but controversial. Um, <laughs> Bill Henwood, um, mm -hmm. Marsha Stackhouse. You know, mm -hmm. we have we have some who we know are saints. There are others of us who are maybe more provisional. <laughs> I like the term we're all under construction. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> Mark, were you going to ask a question earlier? Oh, yes. Thank you. Uh, so the dates you had on your spreadsheet, uh, does that go back to the statement you said before that the day the saints are recognized when they die? And if that's the case, the follow-up question would be that it seems like there's an inherent bias to that because not only do you have to be saintly, but you also have to die on a day that happens to be empty for saints. To be <laughs> <laughs> there, 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 are, um, there are some days where there are two people. Or more. Or more, but um, there are some days where there are two. But so, it is when you die, is that, is that right? Yeah, although as I mentioned, I think maybe last, last time, is that the church, the Episcopal Church, makes allowances for Martin Luther King because he has a public holiday. And cool. so if, if you go in Lesser Feasts and Fasts, any of the ones that, that have been published since he was added to the calendar, um, you'll see also could be celebrated on the MLK holiday. Mm -hmm. But his, his death day is April 4th. Yeah, and that kind of relates to this item five that you have on the screen share about Jeffrey Chaucer. Oh, I didn't realize I was still sharing. <laughs> it just happened to be this made-up date, you know, that some poem. Yeah, let me let me if if I've got if I'm going to have a, a a screen being shared, let me have something that I realized I was sharing. 
Gary, um, can you tell us how we can get a copy of this chart that you've got up? It's yeah, yeah. If if you go to Good Shepherd's uh, web page, um, just the, here, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. Um, if it will load, come on. If you go to our web page, once this loads, it'll be there. Um, I'm probably demanding a lot of the computer with Zoom. Okay. Oh, here it goes. It's it's working. It's working. There we go. Um, you go down here. You see the Faith Forum Saints of Light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then over here, you'll see Procession of Saints. Mm -hmm. That okay. will download an Excel okay. spreadsheet for you. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. And if you want the Lent Madness bracket, there you go. I just uploaded that as a PDF. So this is a PDF that you can download. Okay. All right. So, but the chart is available there as an Excel spreadsheet. Thank you. Do you think it's possible that we would ever put Gandhi, a non-Christian, on our yeah. calendar? He was. Um, I just want to go back here. It'd be good if I could spell it. Yeah, I, I, for some reason, I thought he was included in something at one point. <laughs> I do too, but I, I, you know. He's, he's not showing up in any of these official ones that I've been able to find. No, it might be mentioned by, because some Christian hooked up with him to help. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah, that guy, uh, what was his name? I forgot. He, Andrews. He have an Anglican priest hanging out with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, his last name, I think, was Andrews. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? It's 11 o'clock. Thank you. It was great. I really appreciated this. This was very yes. informative. Yes. Oh, Thank good. You. I'm glad. I'm glad. I hope, you know, now when somebody says, how do you, you know, who are all these saints? You, you've got at least something that you can say that will help uh, provide an answer. And, and again, it's a work in progress. It'll be interesting to see what the 2022 General Convention does. <laughs> Whether we'll have one book um, with more people or what. But anyway, thank you so much uh, for, thank for being you. a part. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. If you've got any other questions, let me know. Anyway, have a good week. Stay warm. <laughs> and, uh, I'm doing. and and I'll say that hallelujah a lot over the next three days. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. After that, whisper it into your pillow. There you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good thought, Mary. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Have a good day. Stay warm.